Hello everybody, welcome to today's class of Physics Standard 7. Now, let's look at motion from a scientific point of view. So, in class 6, we've discussed what motion is. If you don't remember, any object that is moving is said to be in motion. Now, we also know that there are three main types of motion. That's motion along a straight line. It's very evident from its name what it is. Circular motion, that's an object moving in a circle. And periodic motion. Any motion that repeats itself after a period of time. For example, a pendulum swinging in your clock. Now, before we go into today's discussion, I want you to look at this table and look at the different things that are mentioned on the left. I want you to tell me what type of motion this is. Now, guys, do remember, something can be more than just one type of motion. That can be a combination as well. Now, take a look and tell me the answer for these questions. First one. An athlete running on an 800 meter racetrack. Answer. For those of you who said periodic, you're spot on. Now, a car going in a straight road. It's quite obvious. It's motion along a straight line. Now, a pendulum in an old clock. I did mention it earlier. It is periodic. Now, a bicycle. Motion along a straight line. What about the pedal of this bicycle? It's both periodic and circular. See how there's two different types of motion coming together? The pedal of the cycle is not only going in circles, but it's also repeating after a period of time. Therefore, it is both periodic and circular. What about the moon going around the earth? So those of you who said the same answer, that's correct as well. The moon not only goes around the earth in circles, it also goes around the earth in about one month once. So that repeats itself. So it's periodic and it goes in a circle. So it's circular. Now, what about a ball rolling down a slope? This is a bit tricky. I want you to think about this. Imagine a ball rolling down a slope. What all motions do you think would be there on this one? Well, the answer is all of them. The ball is rolling down. So it's going in a straight line. Because it's rolling, there's the circular motion. And because... This circular motion is also associated with the time period as well. It's periodic as well. So now we've looked at different types of motion. Let's go into our next exercise. I want you to look at these three cars. I want you to observe them very carefully. You see the three cars moving from left to right. Now, can you tell me which of these cars is faster than the others? Look at them again. There are three cars. One, two, and three. Tell me which one is faster. Now, it's quite obvious that this car is faster because it reaches the end before the other two cars. Now, it's quite clear this, this is the fastest. This is a bit slower. And the one on the top is the slowest. But now, what if the direction of these cars were changed? Now, can you tell me which is faster? It's not as easy as it, as it was before, is it? Now, you can't tell if this one is faster or this one is faster. It's a bit confusing, but the answer is this. Now, how was I able to understand this by looking at this? It's not that evident. Well, now, if I asked you, what is longer? My finger or my hand? You'll tell me that the finger is smaller than the hand because the hand has a certain length and the finger has a length that's shorter than that. And therefore, with this unit of measurement, we can say that the finger is shorter than the hand. What if we had a unit of measurement for seeing which object was faster? That is where the concept of speed comes in. What is speed, you ask? Speed is a measure of how fast an object is moving. So, looking at the earlier example of the three cars, if we know how what the speed of the, these three cars are, we can compare which is faster and which is slower. And that is the whole point of speed. Now, you've all heard the term speed before, surely, with your car or even when you're traveling by a bicycle, somebody must, must have told you, don't ride with too much speed. How do we understand what speed is? Speed is calculated by taking the distance traveled by an object and dividing it by the time taken by that object to cover this distance. So that is, speed is distance divided by time. This distance traveled by the object divided by the time taken for it to complete that. Now, that is distance traveled in unit time, if you want to define it scientifically. The units for speed is meter per second. Now, that's the SI unit, and you've learned about SI units in the past. 
Keep in mind, meter per second. Now, I have a question for you. The 2008 Beijing Olympics, Usain Bolt managed to win the gold medal in the 100 meter sprint. He also broke the world and Olympic records for the 100 meters. He finished the race in 9.69 seconds. What I want you to tell me is, how fast was he going? Now, that means, what is the speed of Usain Bolt in this race? Let's do that problem here. We know that speed is equal to distance divided by time. Now, what is the distance? That's 100 meters. Or the time? 9.69 seconds. That is 100 divided by 9.69. What is this answer? I want you to take a calculator and look it up and tell me the answer. Anyone? It is 10. Anyone? Tell me. 0.3 meters per second. Now we know the speed of Usain Bolt in his Olympic gold medal race. Let's look at another problem. Here, let's go back to the 2014 Champions League semi final between Real Madrid and Bayern Munich. In this game, Cristiano scored a very, very good goal in the 34th minute. For this goal, he ran the entire length of the pitch and scored that goal. But during a sprint, the speed was noted as 27.8 kilometers every hour. Now, he ran 85 meters to score this goal. I want you to tell me how long it took from the point where Ronaldo started running to the point where he scored the goal. How long did it take him to complete this 85 meter sprint? Now, there's a hint given for you here. This is in kilometers per hour and the distance is in meters. So, we should convert the kilometer per hour into meter per second. I'm going to give you a second to try it yourself. Let's look at this in a simple way. We know that the speed is 27.8 kilometers per hour. Now, how do we convert this into meter per second? One kilometer is how many meters? It is 27 into 1000. Now, this is how many meters per hour he was traveling. Now, we don't want meter per hour. We want meter per second. So, how many seconds is an hour? Divide. So, we know that 60 seconds is a minute. And we know that 60 minutes is an hour. 60 into 60 is 3600. Now, if we look at that, that becomes 27.8 divided by 3.6, which is, anyone? 7.72 meters every second. Now we have that, it is quite simple. We know that the speed is equal to distance traveled by time. We know the speed that he was going at. We also know the distance he traveled. We have to find time. Now, we all know basic algebra. We can easily swap this around to get time. That is, distance by the speed gives us time. Now, what is the distance? 85 meters. Now, we divide that by the speed he was going at. This 7.72 meter per second. Then, we get the answer as... I want you to use your calculator and tell me this answer. It is 11 seconds. So, it took him only 11 seconds to run the 85 meters. That's very, very fast. Now... We've learned about speed. Now let's look at a graphical representation of speed. You all know how to draw a graph. We've all learned it in mathematics. Now let's look at how to make a distance time graph. What is a distance time graph? It is a graph that has got the distance traveled by an object on its y-axis and the time taken to travel that distance on the x-axis. 
that is very useful for studying the motion of objects as you will learn in higher classes. You will definitely need this in your 8th, 9th and 10th. So let us look at how a graph is drawn. So this is the distance traveled and the time taken. Now, let us learn how to plot this distance time graph. For that, we do a small activity. We need a ball, a scale and a stopwatch. So a round ball, a very long scale and a stopwatch. First, I want you to take the scale and make markings on the ground. That is 2 meters, 4 meters, 6 meters, 8 meters, 10 meters and 12 meters. Now that you've got this marking on the ground, I want you to roll the ball very gently and watch it roll past these markings. Now, as the ball rolls past the markings, I want you to take the stopwatch and see how long the ball takes to go between each of the markings. And then, I want you to record these on a table. You can do this multiple times to get the numbers correctly. And I want you to make a table like this with time and distance. And for time is zero seconds. How far has the ball gone? It hasn't gone anywhere. For one second, the ball in this case has gone two meters and so on till six seconds. And it's crossed the 12 meter mark. With this, we can now learn how to make a distance time graph. Okay, there's the table on that side. We need a blank sheet of paper. We know how to draw the X and the Y axis. So we proceed to do that. We have the X axis and the Y axis. Now I want you to make markings for distance along the Y and time along the X axis. So the zero is here, one second, two second, three second, four second, five and six. This is the time that in seconds towards the right. Now towards the top or the Y axis, we have to take the distance. That is two, four, six, eight, 10 and 12. Now that we've made the graph, let us plot the points. So we look at the distance first, zero. And what is the time corresponding to that distance? Also zero. So we make a cross on zero, zero or the origin. Now we look at the time here, that's two. And we find the corresponding value for the x axis, that is two and one. And we make a cross here as our next point. The next point we have to look at is 4 and the corresponding time is 2 seconds. We make a mark here and we repeat this for 6, 8 and 10 looking at the times taken that is respectively 3, 4 and 5. Now that's 12 and that is 6. So now, now that we've plotted the different points, what we have to do is join these points. So that is passes through. And we get our distance time graph. This is very useful tool for analyzing the motion of objects. I hope you've understood today's topic. In our next class, we'll be back with more detailed study of time. Thank you and have a nice day.